here. Order. The question is that the document be noted, and I give the call to the honourable member for Warringah. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak on the Joint Standing Committee on Communications and the Arts report titled Sculpting a National Cultural Plan Igniting a Post COVID Economy for the Arts. The arts explains who we were, who we are, and who we want to be. They facilitate the exploration of human imagination, emotion, and creativity. They give our life meaning. It's important to understand what the arts are. They are a very wide range of human practices of creative expression, storytelling and cultural participation. They encompass diverse and plural modes of thinking across extremely broad ranges of media, from painting, sculpture, music, literature, theatre, so many. The arts can refer to a common popular or everyday practice as well as sophisticated and systematic ones. Most people just don't realise that the arts are part of their day-to-day -day life in so many ways, from their kids' music lessons to the music they listen to, to the TV they watch, to the books they read. The arts are what, let's be frank, got us through lockdown. More directly, as this report notes, the arts just it, it gives a benefit to our mental and our physical health. It's our social cohesion. It's our community building creative thinking and problem solving. Our society is richer and deeper because of the arts. And the arts community in Warringah is strong and vibrant, but they have been devastated by COVID-19. Before COVID-19, the arts contributed nearly $112 billion to our economy. That is 6.4% of GDP. More than 193,600 Australians were employed in this sector. It's disappointing we don't always hear members of the coalition actually rail and fight for those jobs the way they do for the ones they pick in the industries they like. To put it in perspective, it's more than in the finance industry, it's more than in construction, and it's four times more than in coal mining sector. But we don't hear about specific packages and let's stop the economy or our progress for these jobs. For every million dollars in turnover, the arts sector produces nine jobs. This is a job-rich sector. The impact of the pandemic on this sector has been arguably harder than on any other. The arts were the first to shut down and they were the last out of restrictions. In Moringa, 6,400 people were employed in the arts sector at the height of its employment. So in January of this year, it was down to 4,800 people in the sector. That's a 23.6% drop in Moringa alone. And in April last year, only 47 to 65% of businesses were operating. That's a huge drop. Now they've adapted, they've pivoted, they've embraced online platforms, they've discovered and uh, embraced novel delivery mechanisms. Um, and the report points to all of this, but the truth is the sector and the people who work in it have been profoundly impacted by the pandemic, the lockdown restrictions, and I would say the lack of love from the current government. This report sets out how Australia can have a healthy, sustainable industry that will allow Australia's industries and institutions to emerge from COVID-19 better than ever and to soar to new heights. There are a number of recommendations in the report and there won't be time to go through all of them, but I encourage everyone to go and see it through the link to actually look at these recommendations. In particular, recommendation eight is a standout. I've often spoken in this place of the need to support our screen production sector, particularly children's TV production. And I'm fortunate that in Moringa we have several producers, Cheeky Little, Kapow Pictures and Stick Pictures. They're putting out award-winning content like Bluey and Kangaroo Beach. But these producers are under threat from regulatory change in response to structural changes in the industry caused by streaming and digitisation. And the government, unfortunately, is cutting quotas and other support. So what that does is there's no backstop. These changes will lead to major employment losses in this industry, and they could jeopardise some of the iconic content that we and other nations have enjoyed and some of the stories our children have grown up with. The report recommends that the government introduce legislation to require streaming and video on-demand services to allocate 20% of their review on Australian content. I strongly support that recommendation as it will allow our producers to continue to produce high quality content. 
Recommendation 10, which is the National Film and Sound Archive, which uh, to deal with their issue. Prote they protect the memories, they inform who we are today. With the advent of digitisation, there is much work that needs to be done and they really need more assistance. We also need more opportunity. Uh, in Warringah, we've suffered from a lack of creative arts during the pandemic. Pubs have been empty, theatres are empty, everything shut down. So we need programs to reinvigorate the sector. Uh, so I strongly support recommendation 20 to be the elevation and celebration of the arts through a new local artistic champions program, akin to the uh, existing local sporting champions program. I think this would be very good. In Warringah, we have some fantastic projects developing. We've got the Brookvale Arts District. It's been delayed several times due to COVID, but I'm excited about the transformation that is planned for this industrial area of Brookvale in Warringah. Um, what they have planned will really be exciting and it will bring, bring out uh, so much opportunity for our local uh, artistic community. We also have the Manly Council Chamber uh, conversion proposal to convert it to a music hall. Following the amalgamation of the Northern Beaches Council, the historic Manly Council uh, chambers are underutilised and there's an, a surplus to requirement. There is a project put forward for a proposal to convert this beautiful building, an ideal location, into a live music venue. I strongly support the idea. It's central location, it's adaptable in size, um, and it really will, it's an ideal venue and something that we're really lacking in Manly. Uh, it will expand possibilities for local artists and existing festivals, such as the Manly Jazz Festival, which was sadly cancelled for the last two years due to lockdown measures. The report is important. It outlines the extent that the arts was, to which they were devastated by COVID-19, but importantly, it outlines how the sector responded and pivoted, how it, uh, you know, keeping the sector on life support with online platforms and delivery methods, but it also outlines these very important 22 recommendations, which would bring the sector back to life and ensure it really does reach the heights it should. Uh, the re these recommendations are so important, in particular recommendations 8, 10 and 22. They strongly support the arts, in particular for Warringah and some of the industries that we already have established. They're the two new concepts for the electorate show great promise and they have my support. Um, and we just have to recognise arts is the lifeblood of community and culture. And we really would do well to rem remember that and provide our support in this place. And finally, we do need to talk about making sure that we have a strong national broadcaster. I do strongly support that there needs to be a recognition of the role the ABC plays and SBS plays uh, in making sure there is uh, a platform where our stories are told, that we are not Americanised, uh, that our content is not just from overseas. We need to make sure we tell the Australian stories. We hear a lot about the curriculum in our, our history curriculum and, you know, Australian history should be celebrating for, from the government, but yet fails to then want to actually implement policies that will ensure our artistic industries actually can create the, the content, can tell the stories, celebrate Australia, Australian history and culture. So I think there is a hypocritical double standard, and, or, as on a number of topics, uh, that gets really advocated from the coalition. And so I urge the government implement the recommendations of this report, fund the ABC and SPS to ensure we have a strong national broadcaster and we can tell Australian stories. <laughs>